before the modern Japan we know today. The ninja worked secretly in the shadows for hundreds of years. Public records about the ninja are scarce. Ninja Truth. In films and art, the ninja portrayed running at incredible speeds, soaring through the sky and performing gravity defying moves. <laughs> Yet the ninja were not superheroes with superpowers. They were ordinary people like you and me. Which brings us to the question what then is fact? And what is fiction? In this episode, we examine the truth behind the physical abilities of the ninja. If the ninja possessed incredible physical abilities, then it stands to reason that they had numerous training methods as well. Jinichi Kawakami a master of the ninja arts tells us that the key lies in decades of continuous and progressive training. It's a fact that the ninja's physical abilities were above average in many regards. Some began training at the age of three, with the latest being five or six. Past a certain age, your mind interferes and you have a harder time taking things in. Let's take a look at some of the actual training methods used. One thing that the ninja had to have was finger strength. It literally came in handy in many situations. For example, to get past hallways with creaky floorboards, the ninja would pull themselves across elevated beams. Naturally, they had numerous ways to strengthen their fingers. One was to lift bales of rice. They would lift 60 kilo bales using just their thumbs and index fingers. Another was to flex their fingers and then fold them in, knuckle by knuckle. They also performed the Hishingyo, fingertip handstand push-ups that required strength and balance. Then there was a method that toughened the fingers like no other. This is called tiger claws. It's performed while focusing one's full attention on the tips of their fingers. While in enemy territory, the ninja had to be able to quickly pull themselves up walls or fight their opponents barehanded. That's what they trained for. Another thing the ninja had to excel in was their jumping ability. To strengthen their legs, they started at the grassroots. They would jump over fast-growing weeds every day, increasing with the height of the plant. The ninja also frequently had to leap down from high places. For this, they needed strong ankles that could withstand impact. To strengthen their ankles, they walked around on tiptoes. 
A simple yet effective method, they were said to perform this on a daily basis. Then, they would step it up with an intense method. They would walk with their weight on their insteps. This is done to strengthen the ankles so that they're not sprained or injured when leaping down from high places. It's a dangerous method that could lead to ankle injury if not done properly. Yet it was performed by the ninja in their pursuit of greater strength. In addition to their finger strength and jumping ability, the ninja valued sharp eyesight. And they had several training methods for this as well. One was to place their thumb in front of their eyes. They would then alternate their focus between their finger and candles placed behind it. This enabled them to quickly switch their focus. They also practiced adjusting their eyes to changes in brightness. To do this, they would alternate between dark and bright places, training their eyes to quickly adjust to its surroundings. To the ninja, Mental strength was just as important as physical strength. And they had exercises to strengthen their endurance and willpower. One was fasting. Taking in only water, they would refrain from eating for long periods of time. Another was to hold back bladder and bowel movements. Hunger and the urge to relieve oneself were two physiological urges that could hinder remission. The ninja needed the willpower to control them. These training methods helped them be aware of their limits and determine how to proceed while on missions. By bringing together the mind and the body, you're able to maximize your abilities. That's what training was for. Their training was what enabled them to operate effectively and level-headedly when infiltrating enemy territory. The ninja cultivated their skills through rigorous and often unique training methods. And one skill they placed particular importance on was their running ability. So what techniques did they use to improve their running skills? Time was of the essence when communicating information gained in enemy territory. So the ninja had to be able to run fast. And some of their training methods have been passed down. One was to place a straw hat on the chest and run fast enough so that it wouldn't fall. Another was to tie a 10-meter cloth to one's head and run so the end didn't touch the ground. In addition to speed, the ninja needed endurance to cover long distances. And they're said to have utilized a running method different from what we use today. Called number running, it's a running style commonly attributed to the hikyaku, or express couriers who traveled on foot. So what exactly is number running? We visited Takashi Kawabata, a professor who studies body motion at Kansai University. 
Namba running is a method that raises the efficiency of your running ability. It's said to use less energy, enabling you to run for longer. A marathon runner performs the Namba run for us. Yo, start! The axis is at the center of their body, and their arms and legs rotate around it in a twisting motion. With regular running, there's an axis in the center. When the right foot goes forward, the lower body twists towards the runner's left side. At the same time, the upper body twists in the opposite direction to maintain its balance. And the arms are constantly swung to support the twisting motion of the upper and lower body. With namba walking or running, you run as if each leg were on a separate axis. In other words, there's an axis on either side of the body. When a foot goes forward, the upper body of the same side is simultaneously pushed forward. With this running form, there's hardly any twisting motion. See how the shoulders move? With the regular running form, the shoulders go back and forth, while with number running, they remain relatively still. Because of this, the arms don't swing as much. This running form keeps muscle engagement and joint load to a minimum. Now let's assess the effectiveness of this traditional method from a scientific standpoint. This graph displays energy consumption levels after a minute of running. The results show that number running used 22.2% less energy than regular running. The ninja must have studied and trained extensively to achieve a running form that was energy efficient and less strenuous. With this, it might be possible to run more than 100 kilometers a day. The ninja appear to have used this method to quickly relay critical information. Could this be incorporated into modern day life? I'd like to try number running. Uh, do you have any pointers for me? Visualize the two axes and land with your foot flat. Now, imagine pulling your foot back as you move forward. Land flat-footed and pull back. Just like that. It feels quite odd. Right? Uh, I need more practice, don't I? Yes, I'm afraid you do. <laughs> From what we've seen, the ninja not only trained relentlessly, but they analyzed how the body worked and then developed ways to achieve the best results, rather like modern day sports science. They honed their physical strength and their mental strength, and that's what gave them an advantage. Join us again next time as we continue our pursuit of the Ninja Truth.